it's Shoba from Just Go Places. Welcome back. I want to talk to you about a national park in St. Lucia, Pigeon Island, which is totally worth the visit next time you visit St. Lucia. Pigeon Island in St. Lucia isn't really an island anymore. It's connected to the mainland nowadays with a causeway. But all of Pigeon Island is a national park and a super cool place to visit. So let's talk about Pigeon Island. So where is Pigeon Island? It's on the northern edge of St. Lucia by the popular Grozy Lake uh, town. Pigeon Island is itself on the northern bit of the Rodney Bay area. Artifacts have been found on the island that date back as far as 1000 AD when Amerindians, the Caribs, uh, inhabited the islands of the Caribbean. They were peacefully living there until about halfway through the 16th century when the Europeans stumbled upon them. The French pirate Francois Leclerc, famous for his peg leg, used Pigeon Island as his base for his raids. He and his merry band of pirates were the first Europeans in St. Lucia. They used Pigeon Island as a base to attack Spanish ships which were returning from South America laden with gold. And of course, when you have stories of pirates, uh, there are always stories of hidden pirate treasure. There have been treasure hunters on Pigeon Island, but no treasure has been found yet. Later in the 1700s, the British Naval officer Admiral George Rodney built Fort Rodney from where he could observe the military action by the French on the nearby island of Martinique. The fort was a military stronghold for over a hundred years and the capital moved from Soufrier in the south to, to Castries nearby. There's a museum that tells all about this and Rodney was a big believer in slavery so his, his star has faded a bit. After it was used as a military base, Pigeon Island went through several changes of use. Uh, it was a quarantine island to a whale hunting base to a party island for the rich. Then the 20th century Pigeon Island got connected to the mainland and ceased to be an island anymore. So what connected was the Pigeon Island Causeway. By 1971, a causeway was built to connect Pigeon Island and the mainland. Then the area was declared as Pigeon Island National Park, St. Lucia. One of the three sandal resorts on St. Lucia, the Grand St. Lucian Resort, occupies a large chunk of the causeway. Pigeon Island is only 30 minutes from the capital of Castries, so it is an easy day trip from the resorts near Castries or from Grosilet or Rodney Bay nearby. Pigeon Island is open all year round and it's a peaceful part of St. Lucia away from the crowds and the urbanization of the towns nearby. The island itself is pedestrianized and locals use it for their activities as well. If you are driving, there is a parking lot right at the entrance to the Pigeon Island National Park where you pay to get in and you leave your car there. Pigeon Island National Park is about 44 acres and it has beaches and the ruins of Fort Rodney and other military ruins and a museum. There's lots of vegetation and a pristine coastline. It is open to the public year round from all day uh, each day. So there's also a small entrance fee of, I think currently it's about $10 per adult and $3 for children. And that goes towards the maintenance and preservation of the national park. The big cruise ships that stop in Castries come into Rodney Bay and they pass Pigeon Island on their way into dock. These sh ships usually offer tours to Pigeon Island. We didn't come to St. Lucia on a cruise, but we did take a boat tour that took us around Pigeon Island so we could see it from the sea. From the sea, the beaches and the fort look so small and the island just seems to be this large green hunk of forested mass in the ocean. Okay, so that sounds pretty, but what can you do on Pigeon Island? The Pigeon Island beaches are really nice. There are two pristine white sandy beaches on Pigeon Island, St. Lucia, and both beaches have bathroom facilities and are kept in pretty good condition. During the week, they're usually empty and then locals tend to come in the weekends. 
Here you can spend your day lazing on the sand and wading in the shallow waters or snorkeling. Uh, the, sun, the, the, the reef, the coral reef around the beach is supposed to be very nice. The Pigeon Island in St. Lucia also offers some hiking opportunities. Hiking in the National Park is popular because you get really amazing panoramic viewpoints. It's a relatively easy hike as well. As well. Definitely nothing like the Gros or Petit Piton hikes. The hike up to Fort Rodney and its spectacular viewpoint is actually very easy. There is a more challenging hike up, up to the higher peak, which is called Signal Peak. Fort Rodney is 225 feet high and Signal Peak is 330 feet high. The terrain up to Signal Peak is a little rougher as well, but the payoff has even better views than you could expect. From there, you can enjoy uninterrupted 360 degree views of the island, both the Atlantic and the Caribbean, and maybe even Martinique on a clear day. The landscape is lush and green. There are supposed to be 40 different species of birds who call Pigeon Island home too. Another cool thing to do is to explore the ruins of Fort Rodney. The whole park has a fascinating military and civilian history and ruins are spread all across the area. Fort Rodney was built in 1778 and used by Admiral Rodney to keep a BDI out on the French in Martinique nearby. There are old cannons and barracks and bunkers scattered across the landscape, but it is the view from Fort Rodney that takes the cake. It is spectacular. There are other ruins, of course, and fortifications peppered throughout the island. There is also a military cemetery where both French and British soldiers are buried. There is a military museum at the officer's barracks um, or quarters, um, giving a peek into the naval and military history of the island. St. Lucia flipped back and forth between the French and the British 14 times the, it was British seven times and French seven times, and then the British ultimately kept it. So as you can imagine, there have been many battles fought at sea here, and a lot of stories have survived. So why were these two countries fighting over this little island? The super profitable sugar industry on the island was the answer. The sugar plantations were pure profit because they were operated by enslaved labor, and Europe was in the middle of a sugar rush. When the French Revolution happened, slavery was abolished in France and all of its territories. So the enslaved on St. Lucia were freed as well. But then Napoleon came into power and re-enslaved everybody. And the enslaved were not happy and rebelled. A bunch of them fled into the hills and to fight battles um, against being re-enslaved. The British finally agreed to a ceasefire with the bandits by giving into their demands. And the bandits refused to be re-enslaved, but there were about 2,000 of them that became prisoners of war and they surrendered and they were sent off to Portchester Castle in England as prisoners. But the British were so impressed with their skills fighting that they were put into the British military to fight. The British stopped using Pigeon Island as a military base uh, in the mid 19th century by about the time of the American Civil War. It, then it became a quarantine station for the indentured Indian servants that were brought over by the British from India to work on the sugar plantations. Once slavery was officially totally banned, they still needed workers and Presumably they still needed cheapish labor, not as cheap as slavery, but indentured labor still, still was pretty cheap. You'll see something also called Jossat House on, on the island. It's named after an English actress and party girl who leased the island from 1936 to 1976 and threw fabulous parties for the yachting crowd that circulated in the Caribbean. I can just see Princess Margaret as part of that crowd. She had to vacate the lease during World War II when the U.S. Navy took over Pigeon Island as a base to protect the Panama Canal. Once the war was over, she came back and continued partying until the end of her ways. We were lucky enough to have a chat with the historian who was renovating the little museum that's in the officer's barracks, or officer's quarters, and it's an interpretive center. 
that had been closed for a couple of years because, uh, you know, worldwide there were health concerns and effectively the island was shut down and it was sitting and everything was sitting in storage and she was helping to restore it and, and open it up again. And technically she said she was a trained marine biologist, but she knew so much history, she could easily have been a historian and this was a passion project for her. So here is a diorama of Pigeon Island that, that she explained to us and all the places that you can see. So Pigeon Island is definitely worth a visit on your St. Lucia vacation. You not only have great beaches and hiking and a small but fascinating history um, and a museum, it is, it is someplace unlike you'll see in the rest of St. Lucia. So if you like this video, remember to click like, and if you want to see more travel and travel adjacent content, remember to click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.